everyone. Welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. Today's tutorial is how to make a felt needle book. What's that? So if you don't know what a needle book is, it is a simple tool that we use to hold our needles when we're hand sewing. I do a lot of hand sewing, cross stitch, binding quilt, hand quilting quilts, hand piecing. Hand sewing is not a lost art in my home. I find it incredibly therapeutic. But one of the challenges you run into when you're hand sewing is how to store your needles. We have a lot of options from magnetic pins that you can have on your project to hold your needle. But this is probably one of my favorite ways to store a needle. It is a needle book. Now this is the magnetic needle finder I was telling you about. A needle book is just a simple tool made out of a couple of rectangles of fabric with a piece of felt on the inside and you just stick your needles and your pins and your clips, whatever you need in here. And it keeps them all nice and secure so that when you're on the go, you're taking your project from your craft room to your car, or maybe you're taking your project into bed. So at night you can kind of do some hand sewing before you go to sleep. This keeps all of your sharp tools in one place. So you don't have to worry about finding a needle in your bed in the middle of the night. You don't want to do that. So today I'm going to show you a few different variations of this. This is a quilt cotton needle book. Here's another one with a cam snap on the outside, which we'll go over how to use that and the tool that I purchased for it. You can see inside here I have a binding needle, I have a couple of pins, I have my clover clips, I just stick them all in here together, clip it shut, and it's totally secure. I don't have to worry about this stuff going anywhere. We're also going to go over how to do a vinyl needle book with a button and elastic closure. And then this is just another vinyl one I wanted to show you that doesn't use any sort of closure. So if you're not ready for the cam snaps or the button and elastic, but you want to make this beginner friendly tool, you can totally do it. So before we get started, don't forget to give this video a like if at any point you like the video. Any questions or comments or suggestions, feel free to leave, leave them in the comments down below. If there's anything you want to ask me that maybe you don't want to leave in the comments or you want to make sure I see, shoot me an email at jessica at oakleyroots.com. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. We come out with a new video every single Monday and our tutorials are gonna start getting a little bit more diverse. We're sticking to a lot of sewing tutorials and we'll continue with the majority of the videos being sewing tutorials, but we're gonna start diving into some other things, craft related, of course, but also tech related. My education and my career actually deal with computer programming. So I'm very familiar with most pieces of software on tablets, computers, phones, and I've come across a large number of tools that you can use for designing your quilts, designing your bags, checking out the layout, checking out colors, editing your photos in a way that really show off how great your project is in a room that maybe doesn't have great light. So I put a little poll out there on Instagram and Facebook and I had a good amount of feedback of people saying that they would be interested in some techie tutorials with regards to crafting. So Keep an eye out for those in the future. If you're subscribed, you're gonna get notified as soon as they come out. All right, so let's get started. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make three different versions. I'm gonna show you how to make a scrappy one using just quilt cotton and some cam snaps and some felt. The second version will be a vinyl version using a button and an elastic loop as your closure with a felt insert. And the third version is going to be made out of cotton lycra, which I haven't made before. So we're going to learn together on that one. And that one's also going to have a cam snap closure. So before we get started with the first one, I just want to go over the materials. You're going to need an outer panel. This can be vinyl, cotton lycra, cotton woven. This is your exterior. This is what you see on the outside. This is going to measure nine and a half inches wide by five inches tall. So if you have a print like mine, you're going to want it to be in the direction of of the rectangle this way, width wise. If you're using an outer panel that is pieced or is incredibly stretchy, for example, this is a cotton lycra, it is very stretchy and it likes to roll up on the sides, you're going to want to interface it with SF101. If it's just vinyl, canvas, or a simple quilt cotton, then you don't need to interface it with the SF101. You're going to also need a lining panel. I like to use quilt cotton in all my lining panels. This is also going to be nine and a half inches by five inches. You're going to need some fusible fleece, and this will be applied to the lining panel. The fusible fleece is going to be eight and a half inches by four inches. And then for the felt insert, which is what's going to hold your needles and your pins and any other sharp objects, this is going to be a piece of felt. I get mine from Benzi Felt. I'll have a link for them down in the description below. Mine is cut at six and a half inches by three inches. You'll obviously need some thread. I like to use 40 weight thread when I'm working with bags because it's just a little bit heavier without being too difficult for my machine. And if you want to use closures, the sky is kind of the limit. The options that I came up with were these plastic cam snaps. 
So you can see this is a set I just bought on Amazon. It comes with the tool and a bunch of pokey things and different dies. And then it also came with this bundle of snaps in different colors. This set was about $26 on Amazon. I'll have it in the description below. The only negative thing about this is that it really doesn't work on vinyl. The fabric needs to be on the thinner side. So it works great with quilt cotton because it's a little bit thinner. But once you start using vinyl where it gets very thick and then you also have the fusible fleece layer in there, I found that they did not hold. They would continuously fall out. For thicker fabrics, I like to use a button and a small piece of elastic as my enclosure. These are just basic buttons I found at Hobby Lobby. This is a quarter inch wide piece of elastic and it is three inches long. And I'll show you how to install this in the second needle book. All right, so the first needle book is going to be a very scrappy, scrappy needle book. So here are my scraps, here's my felt, here are some scraps from other projects, and here is my SF-101, and here is my fusible fleece. So this is what I'm gonna be using to construct the needle book. So let's first construct the outer panel of the needle book. I have a few of these leftover half square triangles from a recent project, and then I've also got some of this great salvage from Ruby Star Society and they have beautiful little sayings on it. And I thought this would be fun to work together. So my goal is to get a piece of fabric that is nine and a half inches by five inches. So what I'm gonna do is just add maybe this in the middle. So these three pieces together at a quarter inch seam allowance and then trim down the ends so that it's even. And then I'll probably apply these on the ends just like so. And if I still need to add more, then I'll add some to the sides. So I'm just going to start piecing this together and you can kind of watch as we go. Let's see, I think I want it to be a layout like that. So I'm just going to pin this onto here. This is what's fun with these needle books is that you can get really creative with whatever you have. You don't have to go buy fabric for this project. So I've attached this to the middle piece. Now I don't really like this fluffy stuff on the edge, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off. All right, so now I'm going to line up this. Big thing is you wanna make sure you don't line them up like that or something. I mean, you can, but then you're gonna be adding, you're gonna be trimming and adding, and it'll be super scrappy, which will be beautiful. But we wanna make them pretty much aligned, which is easy to do if we just do it top down flip it right sides together, and then we can line up the sides and we can line up the top. All right, now I'm gonna go stitch this together. Now I have this together, so I'm just gonna trim off the edges. Just line it up. When you when you trim off the edges, when you're doing something like this, the, the goal is to find a straight line somewhere. So I'm gonna use this seam right here as my straight line. And I'm just gonna line up, I like to line up the half inch marks because they're a little bit easier to see with regards to where what you're lining it up against. The, the one inch lines are darker, so they kind of cover your seam. So sometimes you don't quite line it up as straight as you'd like. The half inch marks are dashed, so you can see your seam much better. And just trim off the edge. Do the same for the other side. Again, just lining it up with something that is straight. All right. Now let's check our size. Our size is currently about nine and one quarter inches long by about four and a half inches wide. So let's add some stuff to this, okay? So I'm gonna add this strip to the top and I'm just gonna do right sides together. Now this is a straight enough line. So what I'm doing is I'm lining it up on my grid. There's a bit of a wave here, but again, I'm okay with that because I like this scrappy. I like it not perfect and it's not going to cause any big problems on such a small project. So I'm just going to line this up. Now I'm not taking you to the sewing machine for these parts because you can just sew it together however it gets together. Two and a half millimeter stitch length, quarter inch seam allowance. Just sew it however it gets together. I'm also going to sew this strip on the bottom. So I'm just gonna pin that while I'm here so that I can do both of them at the same time. Maybe save myself a few seconds. Now I'm gonna take this sewing machine and stitch these onto the sides. So now I'm just gonna trim off these tails. I'm gonna line it up with this line right here. Just finding a straight line. And trim, trim. 
So let's check our measurements. Oh, we're past six inches, so we know we can trim this down nicely to our five inch width. Let's look at our length. Our length is still at nine and a quarter. Now, you don't have to add that extra quarter to make it nine and a half. You could trim down your lining, but to keep the measurements kosher, I'm actually going to add a tiny bit of fabric here. I'm just going to add this to the side. This is going to be eaten up in the seam allowance later. But again, just to keep all of my measurements the exact as my pattern, I'm going to add this on here. I'm just telling you, though, you don't have to. You can trim it down. You can trim. That's the beauty of this pattern is that you can really adjust it to whatever you feel like. So now let's trim this down to, again, make it a nice rectangle. I'm going to line it up with this seam up here. Just go to the edge. Give it a trim. All right. So now let's measure again. We are at about 10 and a quarter inches. So we're good. So now we pretty much just have a scrap piece of fabric that just needs to be cut down to the right size. So if you didn't piece it together, you just had, you know, a basic piece of fabric, you can just cut this down. You don't have to piece it out. It can just be a regular piece of fabric scraps. What I'm saying is just work with what you got. Don't go buy something for this. All right, so let's trim this down. So I need it to be five inches wide. So let's see, this is my five inch mark. Here's zero to five inches. So let's kind of eyeball how I want this to look. I think I like it with a bit of the pink and some of the orange. So I'm gonna match up my half inch seam allowance on this seam running all the way down and just trim. All right, so now I have a nice straight edge to use for the rest of this. So now all I have to do is flip it, match up my five inch mark, which is right here, on that cut, on that edge. And now this will be five inches wide. Perfect. Now we're going to do the same. So I think I want to keep my patch. I'm okay losing. I have to decide which end I'm okay losing. I'm okay losing stuff on this end. I want to keep this end. So we're going to find our nine and a half inches, which is right here. Line it up I'm using this half inch mark up here on the straight edge up at the top. So now I see this is my, this is my unit. Hold it down. Give it a slice. There we go. Ooh, hello. So now we have our outer panel. Now, since this is pieced, I am going to interface it with SF-101. Because I have all these seams and when I'm putting it in my bag and I'm moving it around, I don't want these seams to be tugged on so much that they come undone. The nice thing about SF-101 is that you can apply it to the back and what it does is it just keeps everything in place. No matter how much you stretch, you're not going to stretch your seams. The seams are going to stay where they are. You could also add quilt batting to this and then go to your machine and do a nice little quilting design, but come on, that takes time. And this is a beginner level sewing tutorial. But if you're a beginner and ambitious and you want to go quilt, you go quilt. You do what you want. But I'm going to apply this SF-101 to my backing. All right, so I have my handy dandy wool pressing mat. I'm going to take... This, this also, this SF-101, this is scrap from another project. So when you're making bags or anything that requires a lot of SF-101 and then you have these little remnants, keep them, store them. You will use them on smaller projects. So I'm just going to place it so that it's covering it well enough. And now I'm going to adhere it. Now with SF-101, this is one of those things you want to hold the iron down and just let it sit for a few seconds and then move it and let it sit. The nice thing about SF-101 is that as the glue dissolves and melts, it doesn't shrink. So you can just hold down your iron and go around. Get those edges really well. So let's it up, grab some scissors, and let's trim around right up against it. You could use a rotary cutter and a ruler if you desire. I find that no matter how much I press and press and press my fusible interfacing, it likes to not always adhere in all the spots. So I trim the entire thing down. And now what I'll do is I'll actually go over it again, but from the top this time, since I trimmed off all the excess, I won't have to worry about any glue getting on my iron. So now I'll just go and I'll just press it down one more time from the top 
And this just helps because, you know, I'm going to be turning it inside out. I'm going to be working with it. And I really don't want these edges coming apart while I'm in the middle of sewing. All right, and now we have our scrappy outer panel ready to go. Let's work on the lining. So for the lining, I'm actually just going to use two uh, charm squares. Charm squares are five inch by five inch cuts of fabric. You can usually get a good stack of charm squares in a charm pack from quilt shops, online fabric shops, and they're relatively inexpensive. The problem is they're so small, what do you do with them, right? But it's a, it's a nice way to inexpensively get an entire line of fabric that maybe you're interested in. And I, you can even use them as swatches so that later when you wanna buy yardage, you know which ones you wanna get. But in this case, we're going to use them for the lining panel of our needle book. So right sides together, figure out where you want the center seam to be. I'm choosing this line, trying to, trying to kind of line up those stripes and then just pin in place. I'm gonna take this sewing machine and I'm gonna do two and a half millimeter stitch length at quarter inch seam allowance and just sew these pieces together, very basic. So here is my lining panel sewn together. It is nine and a half inches by five inches. I'm not going to lie, I did come up with the measurements based off of charm packs. Now it's time to adhere the fusible fleece to the lining panel. Take your lining panel right side down and then grab your fusible fleece. Fusible fleece has a soft side and a rough side. The rough side is your glue. That's what we're gonna try to melt. So we want rough side down against the back of our lining panel and just center it. Ideally, you're looking for about a half of an inch around each side. If it's a little less, a little more, don't worry about it, just eyeball it. So once you have it centered, the trick is, we're not going to iron on this side. We actually want to take it and flip it over and iron on the pretty side of the fabric, which is why we usually like to make sure we cut our fusible fleece down before we adhere it to our fabric because you don't want any of that fleece around the edges and getting on your iron. Adhere your fusible fleece. I like to keep my iron moving a little bit because as the glue melts, it does contract a bit and I've had some issues with some cotton fabrics warping a little bit while I am melting the glue on the fusible fleece. So I hold it for a couple seconds and then I move it. And the nice thing about fusible fleece is that the glue melts pretty quickly. And one thing I, I've found that helps a lot with fusible fleece is that once you're done pressing it, just leave it for a second to cool. Don't pick it up right away and start using it while it's still hot because that kind of, the glue's still wet, okay? It's gonna move around. If you just let it cool and set for just a few seconds, it's gonna make using it much easier. So we now have our lining fabric and our exterior fabric ready to go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna place them together, right sides together. I like to mark a three inch opening along the bottom of one of the longer edges. This is gonna be what we use later to turn the whole thing right side out. I'm just going to pin this in place and take it to my sewing machine. So I actually like to sew on the back of the exterior piece. So you can see the back of the lining piece has this fusible fleece right here. The fusible fleece doesn't always leave a half of an inch seam allowance, which gets distracting when you're trying to keep it at half of an inch. So I find it more important to keep the half of an inch seam allowance than to keep it right on the edge of the fusible fleece. So I like to sew it on the back of the exterior piece and that's also where I marked my opening. So I'm gonna start at one end of the opening and I'm going to line it up with my washi tape I'm using a two and a half millimeter stitch length. Make sure you give it a good back stitch at the beginning and at the end so that when we pull this whole thing through this hole, we don't rip our stitches. is just clipping these corners. I like to get about a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch away from the corner and just clip it diagonally. So now we're just going to flip the entire thing right side out through that hole that we left and just be gentle. Now to really help with those corners, you can use a chopstick or a pencil, maybe the eraser of a pencil. So once we have it all right side out, let's get our iron and let's press it down. So before I press, I like to kind of finger press down our opening just a bit. So you push down the fabric and that fusible fleece is right there. So you can actually see here's our fusible fleece and here's the rest of the fabric. We're just going to wrap it all the way around that fusible fleece. 
And then once you have it wrapped, push down the other side as well. Just give it a little tug and that helps keep it nice and flat. If you want, you can take a couple clips and clip it in place just so it doesn't go anywhere. So the reason we press this down right now is because the next step is top stitching and this makes top stitching easier and leaves the product looking much neater. When you try to top stitch cotton, especially without pressing it first, it can make it a bit bubbly and wonky. This just makes the next step easier. All right, so when we do top stitching, we wanna change our stitch lengths to about three millimeters a little bit more. This is more of a design stitch. It's also going to be what we use to close this opening that we use to birth our little book. So just pick any spot really. An eighth of an inch seam allowance usually for me is about halfway on my presser foot. You just kind of eyeball it. I do like to back stitch in the beginning of my top stitching. Then just go around the entire book nice and slow. basic very very cute rectangle I mean <laughs> just like making pretty things and this is cute so what we do actually is we fold it so since we use the charm squares in the beginning we know where the middle seam is so we can just kind of fold it along that and this is what my needle book is currently looking like and I'm really happy with that that's adorable the next step is to add our piece of felt in the middle which is going to be what holds all of our needles since I already have a seam here from the charm, I don't actually need to create a line. But if I did need to create the line, what I do is I measure the length of my pouch, which is about eight and a half inches long. And then I take half of that, which is four and a quarter inches long. So four and one quarter is this center line here. I then would take a marking tool, like a chalk pen, something that comes off easily. Don't use one of those friction pens or anything that leaves any sort of liquid on it. Let's just stick with chalk for this part. So I just mark it in the middle, just like that. I then take my piece of felt. I do something similar. You can fold it in half, find the midpoint, give it a nice little crease, and then just run your chalk pen along that crease. You could also use your ruler to study the length of it, which is six and a half. So half of that is three and a quarter. Go to your three and a quarter mark and do the same thing. Mark it. Now, lining side up, felt, we line up those lines together so that they just cross over. Now, how high, how low do you want it? I like to just eyeball the middle. And now what I'm gonna do is just go back to my sewing machine with a three millimeter stitch length, I'm going from the very top of my rectangle all the way down over the felt to the very bottom. I'm not just going to do the felt, I'm going to do all of it. And I do still like to backstitch at the beginning and the end. So this is where we are at. I'm going to give it a little trim, just like that just to get those pieces off that we just sewed. So now all you do is fold it along that seam. That's what's nice, that seam there, it creases the fabric so that you have a fold. And now you have an adorable little needle book. You can give this a press to make sure it really stays nice and tight. And you can be done at this point. Now I'm actually going to add a closure to this. We're gonna do a cam snap, which is a plastic little snap closure on it. And I'm gonna show you how we do that. But this is where we're at and it's adorable. I love this. Let's try out these cam snaps. Here is our needle book. Like I said, this was a tool I bought on Amazon. I know that there are tabletop tools that you could use and you can get these beautiful metal snaps, but I looked into it and it's looking almost to be about $300 to get started. And there's just, that's just not in the budget right now. So I figured this is a nice cost effective option. If you are a beginner, then $26 might be a good investment for you to do something with this. There's a lot of things you could do with these snaps. So what I do is I like to eyeball where I'm gonna go with this. So first, let me pick a snap. Let's do a nice, this is gonna match our thread, so let's do a nice baby pink. So I know I need two of the caps, and then I need a male and female end. Here is my awl, and I want my snap to be in the middle, and it needs to be a little bit away from the seam. Now remember, we have a half of an inch seam allowance here, so our seam goes pretty deep. 
I don't necessarily want to catch all of that seam in this because it does bulk up the fabric. So I'm going to go a little bit further in, but I also don't want my felt. So I know my felt's about here. I can feel it. So I'm going to go about right in the middle, maybe right here. That looks good. So I actually stick my owl all through all of the layers and push it out just like that. This is just going to make a hole in your pouch and I'll go through the other end as well. And it makes it easier to stick these through it. Here is my tool. You have different size dies that you use with this. Now the die that was already in here is the same for all these snaps. So that's just what I'm going to use. So you stick the cap on the exterior through that hole and then poke it through. Now I got to be honest, this part's a little tricky because it doesn't always want to go. So I use their little screwdriver and just kind of push it, push the fabric down around it. Now I am not an expert in this, so I could be doing this completely wrong, in which case, please let me know down in the comments uh, that I'm wrong and how to do it. So now you stick, you use this thing and the cap goes on the black part and the white part goes on the male or female end. And then you just push until your hands hurt so bad that you're pretty sure they're bruised. And there you go. And it smushes down that tip to keep it in place. Now we'll do the same with the other side. The cap side goes on the black part. Just kind of feel for it. Push until it hurts. Here is our adorable, super scrappy quilt cotton needle book. Now let's discuss needle book number two. For needle book number two, I'm going to be using vinyl for my exterior, which I've already cut. I'm using a canvas for my interior, which I've already fused with fusible fleece. Again, the interior and the exterior are nine and a half inches by five inches. The fusible fleece is eight and a half inches by four inches. And then here is my felt for the inside for the needles, which is once again, six and a half inches by three inches. This time my closure is going to be an elastic and a button. So I'm going to show you how we install these. So just like previously, we're going to want to put these right sides together. I'm going to add my elastic in and this step, my elastic is three inches long. So I fold it end to end. And to pin these panels, I'm going to be using clips. Since I do have a vinyl, I don't want to poke a bunch of needles through that. So I'm going to attach a clip to my elastic. First, I'm going to go around and pin my panels together, right sides together. So here it is perfectly pinned. Now this is just going to be on the center of one of the shorter edges. You are more than welcome to measure that out. So remember this is five inches. So it's going to be applied at a two and a half inch mark. So two and a half inch mark is right there. So this, you want the loop side in. You want the loop side to be inside between the exterior and the lining, right sides together. We want that in between them. And then just add a clip to it so it doesn't get lost or fall out. Before we go to the sewing machine, let's make sure we mark an opening. I want about three inches. So I'm just going to go right here to here and add my pin again. Now let's go to the sewing machine and sew these together. Once again, we're going to be sewing these together at a half of an inch seam allowance, and I'm using a two and a half millimeter stitch length. I'm going to start at one of my marks and just go all the way around the bag. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Just like before, I want to clip off my corners. And if you want, you can trim down the seam allowance just a bit, but only where there are stitches. If there is an opening, don't cut your seam allowance down. So you see how this is my opening right here and I leave the seam allowance at half of an inch. But the rest I can cut down just a bit. Now we can turn our bag right side out. And there are different types of vinyl out there. There is very thick vinyl, which is what I'm using. And then there's also much thinner vinyl. Thinner vinyl is going to be easier to work with but the thicker one, it just has like a, a richness and a suppleness to it that cannot be beat. But pop out your corners. I find vinyl is actually a little bit easier to pop out with your finger rather than using any sort of sharp tools. The thing with vinyl though is that we're actually not going to press it before we top stitch it because there's a good chance it will melt on our sewing machine. To prepare for top stitching, what I do is I just Hit, push it really close. I get that seam and then I just pin it down just like this. Now these little clips 
are gonna leave a mark on your vinyl, but it's not permanent, so don't worry about that. Need kind of a lot of clips for this. So you can see we have our elastic here, just poking out, looking like a beautiful little loop. Happy as can be. All right, once you get to the opening, you just kind of have to eyeball it. Okay, now for the hard part, top stitching this. Vinyl can be tricky to work with because it is very sticky and it doesn't like to move. Normally, when I top stitch this vinyl, I would use a walking foot. Walking foots are great because it lifts up and it pushes the material forward. So you have less of a chance of it sticking. Our normal presser foot is just flat and metal on the bottom and kind of a little bit wide, and it just sticks to this, which makes it almost impossible to use when you have this on top. Don't put this on the bottom because it's just gonna stick and stay to your metal faceplate. So a walking foot works really well. It could still have some problems, but it does work really well. Another option with vinyl is to use a silicone presser foot. This is a great option because it's plastic on the bottom and it doesn't, see that, it doesn't stick. Here, I'll show you. This is my zipper foot, it sticks. Like if I try to push it, it's not pushing, it sticks. Plastic, just glides right over it. Nothing, super easy. Plastic, easy, metal, not happy. See that, no good. So, you don't have a walking foot and you don't have a silicone foot. Do you have freezer paper or do you have tissue paper? Because those will also work. It's a little bit more difficult. So let's, why don't we walk through that together? Let's try that together. So this is what I found in my kitchen, some parchment paper for baking cookies, which I think I'm gonna deserve after doing this. So I ripped off a piece of parchment paper and all I'm gonna do is lay it on top of the vinyl side, just like that. Now, what I'm gonna try to do, who knows if this is a good idea or not, what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to top stitch on the lining side with my vinyl side down on my parchment paper. So let's try this. Let's just give this a little test run. So I have my vinyl side down on my parchment paper. My parchment paper sides pretty well on my face plate. Let's see if I just do the vinyl. It does not move. The vinyl does not move on the face plate. So it doesn't move on anything, my goodness. So let's give this a shot, all right? Up our stitch length to like three, maybe a little bit more than three millimeters since we're gonna have to remove this paper as well. Let's remove some of our pins. And we're doing an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you're using an old needle, now's a good time to put in a fresh needle because vinyl is so thick. And even when the needle's going through it, it sticks just a little bit. So if your needle is not really up to the task of vinyl, you're gonna have some problems and you're gonna have some skip stitches. So replace your needle if you need to. So let's start, give it a nice little back stitch, and go all the way around. I know some people do not like top stitching from the back. And I understand if your bottom thread is a different color than your top thread, but with, with these situations, it's really good to plan ahead and make sure your top and bottom threads are the same color so that you can do exactly this. Your top stitching for your exterior can be done using your bottom thread. So you can see I'm not having any problems with my vinyl sticking to anything. So I'm gonna say that this experiment has a good result. Let's go all the way around. Give it a back stitch at the end. All right, so here we are. This is our bag. We uh, successfully top stitched the back of it. Let's see what the front of it looks like. So I'm just going to very gently kind of rip it off. Just like that. Now I see it likes to come off the exterior part. There we go. Now I can just kind of grab an edge over here. It's peeling up a little bit. Pull out the inside. I see that I have a few like little bits here, but they actually are really easy to pull out. I was gonna go grab my tweezers, um, but I don't think I need to. They're coming out really, really easily. I think this is a good idea. So there you go. If you don't have a silicone foot or a walking foot, grab some parchment paper. Now I'm just gonna trim off my little threads from the beginning and end of my stitches. So here we go. Here's our rectangle have our loop on the side, we have our vinyl in the front, we can just kind of fold it just like that, finger press it, 
Now let's add the felt piece in before we add the button. So this time I am gonna use a ruler for my marking. So again, this is eight and a half inches wide. So I need to mark at four and one quarter inches right down the middle, just like that. And then I'm gonna grab my piece of felt and I'm gonna mark at three and a quarter inches since this is six and a half inches long. Mark my line here. Place it on top, just like that. Now again, I have to have my vinyl go on my faceplate. So I'm just gonna find a little scrap from what we just did, because I don't need the whole thing. I just need to make sure that where it is, where it's gonna be on the faceplate, that part's covered, and then I'll actually hold up the sides while I'm sewing it, so I'll show you. Here we go, you can see I have my extra piece of parchment paper. I have my felt lined up with the line on my lining side of my booklet. And I'm just going to lay it under here. Again, I'm using three millimeter stitch length. Now, to make sure these sides don't stick, I'm just gonna hold them up a little bit. Make sure you back stitch. And then let's just peel off this part of paper. So again, what's nice is that this seam provides a crease in the vinyl so that it makes it easier to fold it on. Now let's talk about how to attach the button. So here's the button I'll be using, and I'm actually gonna take a needle that I have in my other button needle pouch, and I'm gonna use some bright pink thread for this just so you can see it really well. Normally I would use a thread color that matches the lining because you are going to see it. So maybe white or a light blue thread is what I would use because this is where I'm gonna put my button and that way it would hide it a little bit more. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use bright pink thread. I cut a piece of thread that's about 22 inches long and then I ran it through my needle and I fold it in half so that I have both ends over here. I just pinch them together and wrap it around my needle three times and then pull it through to make a nice little knot. Now we need to decide where we want our button to go. So I'm going to close up my pad here. and I think right about there would be great. So I'm actually gonna push my button down a little bit and what it does is it creates a bit of a crease on here. You can take an awl or you can take a seam ripper. Um, I'll take a seam ripper. And what we do is where we want the button to go, we just poke a little hole, not a rip, just a hole, just a little hole. So that way we know that's where we're going. Now you can keep the seam ripper in place while you do this. Again, guys, if there's any button enthusiasts out there, you guys know I am totally winging this. Anyways, we find our hole on the lining side and stick our needle through it. Pull it out just like this. So now we have our top knot in there and our needle here ready to go. Now, what I do is I just stick it through the end. My button has a little loop on the back of it and I don't know much about buttons, but I stick it through the loop and then I insert it right behind the Mickey back in through that hole so that it comes out about the same place on the lining side. Pull it nice and tight. And once you do a couple of these, this guy gets pretty secure. So again, I'm going to stick him, stick through the back, up, close to the loop on the back of the Mickey, pull it up, make it nice and tight. And now I'm gonna stick it through if you can see, through that hoop on the back of the Mickey and then out the other side. And then I'm just gonna stick it right back through the vinyl and through the lining again. Just like this, stick it in, try to come out, you know, in the same general area. And I'll just do this a couple times. To me, this is a system that works really well. So it's my method. If you have another method that works better for you, please make sure you leave them in the comments below. All right, so I did it a few times. 
this is where we're at. I think it's looking pretty good. So now let's tie off our end. I actually like to wrap it underneath some of my mess here and pull it through, pull it through the loop. Maybe go like that, maybe kind of wrap it around that top knot there, just like that. And then I just stick it into the fabric. I keep it, I keep my needle between the two layers, not coming out the vinyl. Do not come out the vinyl. And then just pull it out another area. And this just leaves a nice little tail that's kind of stuck in the fabric. And then just clip it. Now I can put my needle in my felt to hold for later. Nice too is that the felt keeps the thread from flailing around. So now we have our Mickey button and we can just put the elastic around the Mickey. And now we have our second needle book ready to go. Now let's quickly go through the third option. All right, so option number three is very similar to option number one, except this time we're not gonna make it scrappy. We're just gonna use a full cotton lycra panel. Now cotton lycra is stretchy and likes to roll on the sides. So I did interface this already with SF 101. This is our standard size of nine and a half inches by five inches. Here is my lining piece also cut at nine and a half inches by five inches. It is already fused with my fusible fleece. My fusible fleece was cut at eight and a half inches by four inches. And here is my felt inner piece that holds the needles. And this is cut at six and a half inches by three inches. So once again, I'm just gonna throw this together real fast and then I'm going to use snaps as the closures. And what I'm interested in is how does cotton lycra and the extra layers of fusible fleece, how does that all work with the cam snaps? So I'm not gonna walk you through how to put the whole thing together. Go back to booklet number one to see the exact steps on how to put this together. But in this tutorial, we wanna see how the cam snaps do with these thicker layers of fabric. We know they don't work with vinyl, but will they work with cotton lycra and the extra layer of SF-101 and the fusible fleece? So I'm gonna throw this together real quick and then we're gonna test that theory out. All right, so here's our cotton lycra needle book. And this came together very, very easily. It was just as simple as the cotton, the quilt cotton, honestly. So I'm really excited about this also because this print, I mean, come on, how awesome did this line up with snow Jiminy and then Wendy. Oh my goodness, this lined up so cute. All right, so now let's try the cam snap. So I need my awl, my giant tool thing, and this just in case, and my snaps. Let's try a white actually for this one. All right, so once again, I'm gonna try to figure out exactly where I want this. Oh, it's a little bit harder. I can already tell this is thicker. So we'll see if this works, but you guys you know this is pretty thick. I'm kind of worried. All right, now let's do the male end. All right, well. I mean, it looks okay. Let's try the other one. This moment of truth is whenever you snap them together and then unsnap them. Because if you pull them apart and they stay snapped, but the cap comes off, it didn't work. Here we go. Moment of truth, guys. Oh, this hurts. I'm so nervous. Ready? Oh, it worked. Yay. <laughs> That's so exciting. All right. So cam snaps are going to work with the cotton lycra. That is exciting news. Here we go. Well, this is my favorite needle holder now. Oh man. So here we have our three different versions of needle holders and these are adorable. Okay, let's just run through them real fast. Here's our super scrappy version, right? Where we, we watched in real time, we just threw together some scraps and we made it happen. It's got this adorable plastic cam snap and then we have our needle holder inside or earring holder. And then our second one was this super, super yummy vinyl where we used a adorable little Mickey and in a piece of elastic. So we take the elastic off, open it up, and there we go. Holds our needle, holds our thread, holds all of our things. Super, super cute. And then actually, surprisingly, my favorite was the cotton lycra one. Okay, first of all, the fabric. Look at that, okay? Look at that. We got snow and we got Wendy and Peter. I mean, I didn't even cut this to be like that. It just turned out this way and it's kismet, right? Look at this. And then the snap worked, yay! And so we have this adorable needle holder. So this is a great I don't sew project. I see this all the time, especially on the Backstitch group. People buy this beautiful fabric because I, why wouldn't you? but they don't sew. And they're like, oh, I'm gonna hold on to it, but I don't sew. 
Now, if you don't want to sew, don't sew. But if you want to sew, but you don't know what to do because sewing's hard, guys. It gets hard and it can be expensive, and especially with all the hardware. And I mean, you know, we all dream big. We buy the fabric and then we're like, I'm going to make, you know, suitcases. Well, let's start small. Let's start basic. Let's start with a starter. And this is a starter. You can go so far with this. You can add pockets on the inside. You could add zip around zipper on the outside. You could transform this into a really cool basic wallet. You can go so many places with just a couple of rectangles. Okay. So start small, start basic. This is also great with scraps. I mean, that's what I used it for. I have a ton of scraps, guys, and I actually will use all of these. So if you're a beginner sewer, I hope that this inspires you to try out sewing. If you're a more experienced sewer, this is probably super basic to you, but maybe this was just a refresh that, hey, you know what? I should just gather together some scraps, gather together some vinyl, and just throw something together to hold my needles. So make sure if you have any projects out there that you want me to see, you use the hashtag OklaRootsToots on your photos on Instagram and Facebook. I'll be looking for you all the time. Any questions, comments, make sure you leave them down below. I love hearing them. We're getting close, guys. We're getting close to a giveaway. I'm real excited about it. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye.